Welcome to a new episode of the Stick and Move Podcast. I'm your host, Trey, here with my homeboy, Sam. And today, our top three discussion is the greatest final round, the greatest 12th round or 15th round, when it all said and done, they've gone the distance. And it comes down to that last, last do or die round. We're going to give our top three. So, Sam, let's not waste any time. Give me your number three greatest do or die round ever. Okay, look, these I know there's there's history of greatest rounds, right. final rounds. Right. These are the rounds that I remember seeing that were memorable to me mm-hmm. that left me speechless in awe mm-hmm. and they were one of the greatest fights I've ever seen in my life. Right. These are not in correct order, but these are the best three that uh, that I can remember in the top of my head. All right, go for it. Dude, it was the fight between Carl Frock and Jermaine <laughs> Taylor, bro. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dude, go ahead. It, 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 dude, that, that, me, I was a huge Jermaine Taylor fan. Huge, huge, fan huge right Jermaine here. Taylor fan. Right. You know, uh, being from Little Rock, I mean, I mean, I passed through there all the time. I was a huge fan. Yeah. And um, I thought that Jermaine Taylor was going to completely destroy him, which he was. They were, well, they were tied, but there was there was even a commentator that had Jermaine Taylor up by two points going right. into that final round. Bro, but I respected the style of Carl Frock, bro. Rude. I mean, he Relentless, was a beautiful, brother. beautiful boxer. I mean, he had so much discipline. You know, I don't know how to describe what type of boxer he is, but he was just, the way I could describe it, he was a textbook fighter. Okay. Okay. You know, uh, 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 um, you know. Anyways, that final round, bro, where he f- finally crushes Jermaine Taylor, had the whole place in complete shock, man. Right. 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 And I will never forget it. T- uh, Taylor was just—he was drained. He was hurt. He was. he was disappointed. Absolutely. And nobody expected that, man. It's so funny, bro. Look, we normally do, uh, after every top three, we'll do, like, what fight you left off. I yeah. have that one on there. Only because I feel like my top three is, is up there, too. But, bro, I remember watching that fight because I was a huge Taylor fan. Remember what he did yeah. to, uh, uh, to Hopkins, right? Look, something about Jermaine Taylor, bro, is is I feel bad about his legacy, bro, because he kind of became like that fighter where he could have win the big matches after Bernard yeah. Hopkins, at least for yeah. me. It was like once that knockout happened or that TKO went, went down, like it just changed him after that. You know, mm-hmm. he wasn't really the same anymore. I mean, yeah, he had other losses before he fought Brock, but... Dude, talk about a fight that came down to the last round and Frock was not going to lose, bro. It was a big surprise to me because Frock, if I'm not mistaken, he was undefeated at the time, comes into this fight and it kind of put him on the map after that. People yeah. were like, who is this Frock guy? So I love that pick as your number three, bro. You know what I'm All saying? All right, so what's your number three? All right. My number three is actually... Was the Frock Jermaine Taylor fight better? Yes. But to me, this is more of a personal pick because I was a big fan of both fighters. And that is when Sergio Martinez Uh fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., bro. Yeah. Now, I understand Chavez Jr., his legacy after this fight was never the same. He was a young, undefeated buck with an iron, iron chin, bro. I don't care what anybody says. His chin can go up with anybody else. Not as of lately, but back then for sure. But, dude, Sergio Ma- uh, Martinez was the, uh, the maravilla, the marvelous, right? He was the, uh, the, the left-handed boogeyman that ended, that ended Paul Williams' 
run as the original boogeyman. That is here insane. We yeah. We got to do an episode on that. Yeah, go ahead. Dude. Go ahead. And it's embarrassing that we haven't done that episode yet. But anyways, yeah. look, what made that, I remember where I was when that fight happened because it was between Chavez and Canelo. And I would honestly say at that time, Chavez Jr. was the bigger face of Mexico and boxing than Canelo was at that time. And look, did the fight live up to the billing? No, it did not. It was actually a snooze fest. I remember just sitting there rooting for Chavez, even though I love Martinez, right? But Argentina and Mexico, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cultural rival. And I remember just watching that fight. I was like, damn, this is a 10-1 fight going into that last round. When all of a sudden, about a minute 45 left, Chavez catches him, bro. Yeah. And I got I to gotta give it to, to Martinez. They were saying, look, you already won the fight. You don't need to be aggressive. Just you could dance around. But, of course, does he do that? No. He gets in the phone booth with Chavez Jr. He knocks him down. The crowd is going crazy because, like I said, <laughs> Chavez Jr. <laughs> at the time was in the running for being the face of boxing. And he was pulling off. And what was everybody talking about? Was this Chavez Sr. Taylor part two, right? Yeah. The son had, you know. The, anyways, the point of the matter is Sergio Martinez barely makes it up at 10. And they start slugging it out. Martinez almost going down again, hugging and hugging, trying to delay the time. And eventually passes up, and, and the bell rings, and Mar Martinez wins by majority. But, bro, for the life of him, kind of like Brock, bro, Chavez almost squeaked out the all-time knockout of knockouts. Do you have any thoughts on that? Go ahead. Dude, I remember watching the fight also. Mm -hmm. Um I, It was also, like you say, it was a snooze fest in the beginning. Right. Dude, I mean, we were waiting. We were waiting. I wanted to see how what what Chavez was going to do against Sergio Martinez. Yeah, um, I knew it was going to be a tough fight, but bro, I have to admit, when he floored Martinez, the house shook, bro. Dude, it did. Bro. The, the house shook, man, and I was like, no way, dude. Right. Is this right. dude gonna do it? Is he gonna pull it off? Is he gonna finish Martinez, bro? Right. That would have been huge. Dude. And because Martinez people at the were time questioning was, um, him. People right. were questioning Chavez if, if he's you're not your dad. Are exactly, you for real? Bro. Are you exactly. not elite? Blah blah blah. This was the test. Right. Bro. Right, right. He need you know, and 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 he needed it. He needed that knockout, to, but but he was still respected for what happened. Dude, I, it was one of those fights where Chavez even got more pub after defeat. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, very rare that happens where the loser uh, catapults the winner and they create a new legacy on their own. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Chavez kind of fell apart after that. I remember the uh, HBO or Showtime documentaries because you know chavez was a guy chavez jr and you know it showed him becoming lazy uh, vigilant against his father he was never really the same after that i think when he went to uh 175 as as super light heavyweight i think uh that ruined his career he became punch drunk after that afraid to jab and he was never the same unfortunately i think we were robbed of a potential next great mexican yeah. superstar yeah. Who could have lived up to the name a little bit? But yeah, I remember that all the pressure. You're not your dad. You're not your dad. I remember that too. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, what is your number two, brother? Well, like I said, I don't have them in order. Yeah, yeah. I don't have them in order, right. but these are epic. You know, uh, 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 final rounds of the fight, and it's the iconic, bro. Yeah. Chavez Senior, Meldrick Taylor. Ooh, I thought that would have been your number one. You know, yeah. the, it, it's the iconic, bro. Where I, we both recall where we were at at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I didn't realize at the time. You know, I had a girlfriend. I was a teenager. <laughs> you know, 
and, and, you know, but I saw all these people gathering around adults, right. and I didn't see how I, I mm-hmm. okay, I realized later how ep- epic this fight was. Yeah. I remember I was a huge boxing guy, a kid at the time, and I remember having the ring magazine, Meldrick Taylor being the fastest hands in boxing. Exactly, exactly. Dude, and Chavez being Chavez, you know, the Mexican uh, uh, king of boxing, blah, blah, blah. Bro, I remember seeing the fight, and I was just like, I don't know how Chavez is going to dominate with Meldrick Taylor's hand speed. Mm Mm-hmm. And and it, it, throughout the fight, you started seeing Chavez picking away, bro. Exactly. Picking exactly. away. You know, to the body, an overhand right, a left hook to the body, picking away, picking away. I started seeing Roderick Taylor bleeding, bro. I said, and the people around me, too, were like, Ch- Roderick Taylor's ahead. Roderick Taylor he's going to win this fight. Mm-hmm. We get into the final round, bro. And I remember right before the final round, though, Taylor falling down from exhaustion already. Right. I remember right, seeing right. that once or twice. And well, I, dude, I remember, Taylor. I remember Taylor in the corner, bro, was down, brother. Yeah. While Chavez yeah. was just going through his normal corner routine. Go ahead. And I saw... When I started seeing Taylor's the blood, uh, Lou Duva losing his mind, um, and Taylor just getting busted up, I did see it. I just think there was not going to be enough time. A 12th round came around. I said, all Taylor has to do is survive. Taylor, I, I, I blame Lou Duva. Mm. You know, I, I blame Lou Duva. He should have had Taylor, you know, run, run this round. Right. And but kudos to Meldrick Taylor, warrior, bro, warrior, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Yeah, Meldrick Taylor, Meldrick Taylor, warrior, bro, getting knocked out in the final 10, 12 seconds of the fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like two seconds left. The waved it off. Richard still waves it off. It was uh, the breakdown where he lands that body shot and the hook, and it just hurt Taylor, bro. And you mm-hmm. saw Taylor fold and start, you know, uh, pacing back to the corner. And then right. Chavez catching him, bro. So and you... it was it was epic. It's in his it's it's bro, it became a historic, bro. I'll say this too, bro. Like I was already worried. I'll be honest, you know, big Chavez fan, of course. We had an episode, it was the overrated, and we talked about Chavez a million times throughout this podcast. And and uh I remember thinking there's no way Chavez is going to win. Mm-hmm. You know, he struggled. He had the robbery, the great the great train robbery against Prono Whitaker. He uh, he lost to Frankie Randall. Then he avenges Frankie Randall. So he was obviously struggling with this type of speed. And Meldrick Taylor, I mean, he like you said, the fastest hands, right? Mm-hmm. And I was thinking like, no, I think uh, there's a certain type that Chavez could fight with. And Meltzer Taylor is not that guy. I actually thought that this would be the first time Taylor was going to, that Chavez was going to get knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, dude. Like you said, Chavez kept peppering away. His punches were so effective, bro. In my opinion, and I've said this throughout the podcast, our history, I think those were life changing blows, headshots that Chavez was giving to Taylor where Taylor never recovered after this fight. You know what I'm saying? And I honestly think for Chavez that he took it, he was the more effective puncher. You know, if you look at the scorecards of that fight, I think two of the judges had it a draw going into that knockout. And I think one had it for Chavez winning. And I think what people saw was, dude, Chavez was just his his body punches, his head punches, which is by far more effective. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, yeah I, I, I agree. Um, the, the the punishing uh, uh, um, punches were coming from Chavez, bro. Mm-hmm. They were. It was. It was just every time Chavez landed, you knew you knew it was pain, dude. It 
it was a career ending type of fight. You know, like what I'll probably get cuts for, you know, some hate comments about this, but like the beating that Tito Trinidad gave Fernando Vargas, bro. Right, he right, never, right. he never came back from that, bro. Right, right. Vargas right, right. never. It, 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 you're not the same anymore. I agree. I agree. You know, I agree. and I think that that's what the fight did to Mother Taylor, and then of course mentally taking the you know the, the loss. Right. You know. Um. But yeah, Chavez just damaged him, bro. Damaged him. So. Yeah, I agree with you. One time, I thought that would have been your number one. So now I'm excited to hear what your number one is going to be. Okay, so because <laughs> I think that's everybody's number one. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah. But I'm mixing it around. But go ahead. Right, so what right, is right, your right. number two? I'm going to go back into time, brother. I know our followers. Half of them love it. Half of them hate it. But our subscribers, I apologize. I'm going to go to Marciano versus Ezra Charles, bro. A 15-round fight, brother, that resembled, like, speaking of a pun, like a Rocky movie. These legends were going back and forth, back and forth. And when it came to that 15th round, bro, they left it all on the line. Now, considering that Ezra Charles, you know, that's the legacy of Marciano. Always fighting the great legends when they were much older. But, I mean, what can you do? You fight who's in front of you, right? Uh, look, Charles, it, when it came down to this fight, bro, especially in that round, they were willing to, it, it felt in my opinion that they were ready to die for this, for this fight. Marciano, people believed that he was losing this fight and that he was not going to go down, even though Ezra Charles was giving him hell, beating him down to death. You know what I'm saying? Fortunately or unfortunately, Marciano gets the best of him. And, of course, he wins the fight on points. And it was just a game changer of a fight. That one was one of those, like, it's what you see in those old boxing movies, bro. Where you could get hit with the most hellacious headshots, body shots, you name it. And it's going to come down to uh, who wants it more. All about blood. All about pride. That is my number two. You have any thoughts on that? Dude, dude. Um, that was epic, man, honestly, bro, because it was a time the world was watching before social media and all that stuff. And um, it was another test, you know, uh, 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 for Marciano. You know, is he the real deal? I mean, going up against Charles, man, dude, it was... It it, it 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 was one of the most brutal fights also that I've ever seen, especially because you know, uh, uh and then Rocky Mar- Rocky Marciano being what five ten? Yeah how tall yeah. was he? Yeah, yeah was and ten. and it just it, it was it was just epic, man. It was a different time. It was uh the rules were different, the rounds were longer. I mean, I mean there was more rounds in the fight. I mean, it that was just a brutal fight, man. Here's something interesting, bro. You know, Marciano said that that was the toughest man he's ever fought. Yeah, yeah. And he fought everybody. Yeah, older, okay, it is what it is, right? You know, we could do that. If we were to break down a lot of legends, boxings, resumes, we can get into that for a lot of them as well. But look, bro, this is this is one of those fights where it was so brutal on Marciano. He would retire almost two years later. And and Ezra Charles would fight for another five more years, and and Charles and Charles had been fighting since 1940, bro. He would fight for almost 30 years combined, and that's why Ezra Charles is considered one of the all-time greats because not only the longevity, but bro, when he came into the ring, he brought it every single time, and he let the best at the time know Marciano that. Yeah, you might be the guy. You might be the most famous man in America or most famous athlete in America at the time, arguably, that I'm going to give you the best fight you've ever had. And you watch the highlights to that fight, bro, especially in that 15th round that would end up going to decision. Dude, next level, bro. And by the way, the next fight, the second one was also action-packed, and that's where Marciano would get the best of him in that rematch, I think in the eighth round. I could be wrong on that. But... Anyways, that's my number two. 
I'm excited. What is your number one? Talk to me. Look, I can't get over what I saw a month ago, bro. Ooh. I can't get over what I saw. I know that you know, some people will be like, no, that was better 12 rounds. That's fine. That's fine. But I can't get over what I saw on the big screen with my son. And it, 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 it was Riddick Bowe versus Holyfield, bro. Right, right, right. Dude, I, I'm sorry, man. It, it, for me, it was watching two gods. It was Godzilla versus King Kong. Ooh, they've, been, they've been pounding each other all day, all night long. I mean, mm-hmm. bro, these were blows that not even Mike Tyson would survive. These are uh, blows. He would not have survived that, no. Yeah, that Mike Tyson would not have survived. These were shots that would have shooken Lennox Lewis, would have shooken Muhammad Ali, bro. These were two beasts, two kings in the prime. Well, and, right. you know, physically in their prime. Riddick Bo definitely in his prime. Um, d- dude, those were the best 12 rounds of boxing I've ever seen when it comes to heavyweights. The, the, the 12th round, bro, they gave everything they had. Mm-hmm. Everything, all the blood, sweat, and tears, bro. And I'm not, I'm not gonna let that fight and that final round be forgotten and lost, you know. And the books of boxing, bro. That was a. I remember thinking in that 12th round, I'm like, bro, I ain't no man. I'm not a man <laughs> compared to these two, bro. No, I was no, like, no, dude, no, these no. guys were real. Warriors, real men. That 12th round where Holyfield gave it whatever he had. Holyfield took the biggest shots of his life. Uh, a Riddick bow, give you know every last fiber, sweat, everything he left in that ring. It is one of the most unforgettable 12 rounds that I've ever seen. I am. I'm not afraid to say. I'm not afraid to say that was one of the greatest, and I think I did say it. One of the greatest heavyweight fights. In all times. Well, that was actually one of our episodes. Yeah. Uh, that was times. the episode. Greatest, greatest heavyweight fight of all time. Yes. And look, bro. I'll double down on that, bro. I was looking at my notes right now because, you know, I have everything on one book. But I had it Riddick Bow edging that round. But I even have it written there that it could have been even. You yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, bro, like you said. Everything that was left in that fight, that final round, bro, you felt the pride. Yeah, and it, there's some there's something about heavyweight fighters, you know, not not bantam weights or lightweights or 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 welterweights or anything, but heavyweight fighters that are banging all twelve or fifteen rounds. There is something poetic, something uh, 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 majestic about. These 210, 20, 30, 40. I remember Riddick Bo outweighed him by 30, almost 30 pounds in this fight. There's something about heavyweights when they get into that final do or die round where they are burned out, they are tired, where you feel as a man or even as any kind of spectator, a woman, and you're watching this last round and you're like, Dow, that I can never do. Those are warriors. That is why boxing is great. And you feel the heart and the pride that these heavyweights are bringing into that last round. And for Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield, that's exactly what it was. You know, the episode I titled it was Clash of the Titans because it was. It felt like Godzilla versus Kong. You know what I'm saying? And what do you think about the 90s uh, heavyweights? Were they, was that the greatest era of heavyweights? Dude, I was actually thinking about that. And, you know, I know the 70s and the 1950s were all-time greats. You want to go to the 20s with uh, Jack Johnson and stuff like that. But I actually think, bro, I think the 90s was the best. Me too. Of, even the second-tier heavyweight guys – like to uh, Mercer, Morrison, Razor uh, Ruddock, yeah, Razor Ruddock. The second tier group was hell- even George Foreman, uh, uh, Michael Moore. Even those guys would have been phenomenal in the eighties if they were yeah. in the eighties or in the seventies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The nineties yeah. heavyweights, that second tier was also, in my opinion, 
could only be second to the 90s of all-time great heavyweights. Guys, in our comments, go ahead and tell us what you think about the 90s heavyweights. Is that the greatest era of heavyweights of all time? So, I love your number one. That is epic. I love that, man. So, okay. what is your number one? My number one, bro, I'm going to go to Manny Pacquiao versus Eric Morales, bro. Oh, man. Now, look. <clears throat> Morales won that fight, and he did. In my opinion, he definitely did. But that last 12th round, bro, it was beyond epic in my opinion. And here's why. So much controversy, bro. It, I love the fact that it kind of felt like this was the fight that they were trying to launch Pacquiao into becoming the face of boxing. Even though his English was very limited, but you felt from Larry Merchant like, oh, well, he's using the wrong gloves. You know, and it felt like it was an embodied excuse. But you know what, man? You felt from Manny Pacquiao like, I don't care. This guy is in my face. This guy is boxing me. He is fighting me like the way he did Barrera. He is fighting me like the way he did Junior Jones. Uh, and I need to finish this fight. Pacquiao knew he was behind. And, bro, I got to be honest with you. Even though you and I had a top three greatest conspiracies about of all time, and I had that fight on there, I think if Pacquiao was not wearing the Japanese uh, winning gloves and he was wearing his Cleto Reyes gloves, I think he would have knocked out Morales in that 12th round. In that fight? Because Morales was going down, bro. And kudos to Morales. He kept on swinging as well. He even switches uh, Southpaw in the middle of the fight Something he's never done. For some reason, he decides to go southpaw uh, a few seconds into the, the, the into the final round, catching everybody by surprise. But I honestly think that if Pacquiao would have had his Gleto Reyes gloves, it could have been a completely different historical fight. Or the, I don't know. What you think? Talk to me. So you think that Morales, who, who got to choose the gloves? It was Morales. You know? Oh, we're going to fight in these gloves. Right. He fought those 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 old school winning gloves that looked like big old balloons. You know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he was afraid of his power. I, I, I Bro, bro, this this fight that you just mentioned, your number one, that yeah. was that was that was on my radar for number one. Right. That was on my radar because it's hard to argue not to have Manny Pacquiao in any of his wars. Mm -hmm. As being the great, great, that's why, bro, I got Manny Pacquiao, you know, where I have him. And um, because all his fights were legendary. All of them. Dude, all his fights were legendary. But I love that. I love that Eric Morales, Manny Pacquiao fight. I remember where I was at. I remember, I didn't get to see the fight live that night. But yeah. I remember telling somebody, and I'll never forget it. I said, if it goes past the sixth round. Morales is going to win. I agree with you, bro. Dude, that's what I remember saying that. Uh, and 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 um, and it went, and Morales won. But I do agree. If it was Manny Pacquiao's gloves that he, you know, the Cleto Reyes, the fight would have probably ended in inside the six rounds. Who yeah. knows? You know what I mean? And and that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, and you and I had an episode on that on that fight, and I titled, you know, you and I decided to title it. The, the loss that made Pacquiao a legend. I'm paraphrasing, yeah. by the way, because I don't have it in front of me. Because, like we talked about earlier, it's very rare that a loss catapults a boxer over the guy that actually won. You could say Canelo's draw against Triple G, you know, catapulted Canelo, even though it feels like 99 out of 100 people would say Triple G won that fight. You and I had a different score. You and I both had Canelo winning. You and I have an episode on that. But Canelo takes the reins instead, even in controversy. This was one of those fights, same thing with Chavez Jr. that I talked about earlier. Even in defeat, he seemed like his fame went higher than Martinez. For Pacquiao, even in this loss, this was the fight that people were like, I got to see that guy fight. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. He needs and a I, rematch. Yeah, and, and I agree with you. And He would take the best of the rematch. But I agree with you, bro. Pacquiao, 
never said no. He didn't care about timing. He didn't care about uh, waiting out boxers or anything like that. He wanted to fight the best all the time. And, and dude, he was in the middle of, what, two different trilogies at one time, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Yeah, bro. Yeah, true, man. True, true, it's, true. it's crazy. It's crazy. So, any fights that you left off? Because for me, I had Jermaine Taylor and Frock, and, of course, Chavez and, and Meldrick Taylor. Well, uh, you know, if we're, if we're going final rounds, I was going final round of the fight. Yeah. It was yeah. Uh, 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 Diego Corrales and Castillo. Mm -hmm. That's a, a final round of a fight. And, yeah. um, um, I mean, dude, it was Manny Pacquiao and like, like, like the Morales, Manny Pacquiao and, 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 and Marquez. Right. Picked, right. picked the fight. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, man. Uh, these were all great final round fights. <clears throat> uh, all of them legendary. They were all epic and historical, man. Great, great right. choices. Yeah. So those that are wondering, I purposely left uh, Chavez and Taylor because. And I was hoping you would, you yeah. would pick them, and I'm yeah. glad you did. Uh, but, yes, you know, when people think of last round, they always think of, of Chavez and Taylor, whether it was a robbery or not. Uh, but, yeah, I love this episode. Do you have any final words for our audience out there? Yeah, I would like to thank everybody that's watching, commenting, viewing our channel. Please subscribe for those who haven't. Um, share so we can continue um, to keep making content. We're trying to reach a goal by the end of the year to a thousand subscribers. We will be doing some lives, guys, and yes. we're hoping that we're hoping to do the the Lomachenko Cambosas, uh, the 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 Canelo Munguia, and uh, there was another one I think I'm Devin leaving Haney. out. Devin Haney, Haney Ryan Garcia, yeah. you know, continue following these guys. Thank you for the support. For all of you out there, that comment will try to get to each and one of you guys. Um, and uh, I appreciate one of you, I, all of you. Absolutely. I couldn't say it any better. Uh, if you get a message from me, I am the Stick and Move podcast. Sam is Stick and Move Sam 75. We're trying to get to as many comments as possible, guys. Leave us messages. Uh, the, the, the likes and subscribes, of course. The likes and comments help with the algorithm tremendously. So make sure you like or even dislike this episode. Uh, and we'll go ahead and leave it at that. And as I always like to say, don't forget to stick and move, baby. I am the greatest. I wish I was 50 years younger and I'd kick your ass. Come on, dude. Just stick and move. Wait, can you understand? Now stick and move.